Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and it's day two of Maker Fair. It's just the start, so let's go check it out. This is the audio-visual log of the second day of Maker Fair. So I'll talk about interesting projects and show you little videos and pictures of them. And it's about 6.30 on the second day, so it's just about the end of the second day. And I found what is hopefully the quietest spot, although it's right next to the train and the bus depot. So you'll probably hear a little bit of the local flavor of Maker Fair. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about some of the cool things that I saw today. So the BioCurious and Counterculture Labs were biohacker spaces that had some cool things on display. So they had a bioprinter that could print different biological materials. They also had a worm viewer that was basically a microscope you could use to look at things. And I didn't see it, but I've heard that they've been working on a vegan cheese where they're trying to genetically engineer something that's the exact same structure as cheese, but made from, um, I think, bread or yeast or things like that. So really cool that they're working on interesting biohacking things like that. The Open APS project was probably my favorite project that I saw at the entire fair. So this is the do-it-yourself pancreas. Basically, type 1 diabetics have two different systems. They have an insulin monitor and an insulin pump that can measure their insulin level and then they can inject insulin. But both those systems don't talk to each other. And so they're working on using a Raspberry Pi to use the insulin monitor to detect how much insulin they need and then tell the pump to inject that much insulin in, uh, effectively doing what your, your pancreas does uh, for a normal person. And it's just a really cool project that really embodies the hacker spirit. Um, these are just a bunch of do-it-yourselfers that have gotten together because really the big medical companies have been somewhat afraid to build an all-in-one device like this. The technology is there, just no one wants to do it. So these people are just saying they're going to do it themselves, and it's uh, really amazing to see what they've done. Massimo Bonzi of Arduino.cc gave his annual State of Arduino talk, and it's great to see just how big Arduino has gotten over the years and where Arduino has come from. And the big news is that they've announced the Arduino Create platform uh, is open now for people to use, or it'll be open very soon. And it's basically a, an, a whole online system. Uh, Massimo describes it as letting you create a connected device in 10 minutes. So Arduino originally came about because they, people will need, wanted to build hardware you know, in 10 minutes, build something that could uh, blink lights or do interesting things. And so they're trying to do that same thing for connected devices or Internet of Things devices. So I think this will be a really cool platform, something to look forward to. KineticSteamworks.org had some really cool steam-powered things on display. It's just neat to see these old steam-powered things uh, working. You know, you can see them, you can smell them, you can hear them, you can feel the heat from them. Really cool. The Fun Bike Unicorn Club Racing had some really neat bikes on display. It was right next to the Power Wheels Racing Track, where people would have Power Wheels that they could spend $500 to modify and try to soup up and then race around the track. Uh, really funny stuff, uh, really cool display. Kind of typical thing that you see at Maker Faire, and it's just really very entertaining. The die wire bender was a really neat wire bending machine. Uh, not the type of project that you see every day, and so it's kind of cool to see something like that. Looks like you could use it to make like sculptures or metal structures. The Open PNP was an open pick and place machine, where it's basically a build it yourself pick and place machine, and it's uh, actually quite capable. So it has a vision system, and right now it can place 0603 parts. But he's working on getting it down to 0402 size parts, which are pretty tiny. So that's impressive that uh, a do-it-yourself system could do that. Itai Ben Sivi who's the creator of the Pixies, which are these big 3-watt RGB LEDs in the store, had some really cool things on display. So he had a jacket from Burning Man that actually had some of the precursors to the Pixies on it, so really bright LEDs uh, that were lighting up in really cool ways. But the really interesting thing that he was showing off was a guitar project where he put a bunch of LEDs on the guitar, and then he uses a DSP processor that can run a fast Fourier transform to detect the frequencies of notes being played and light up the lights. Very impressive, uh, really cool project. The electric giraffe was out prancing around, so it's a really large metal giraffe structure, uh, Burning Man project that you can get on and ride around, and uh, really, really neat giraffe. Uh, very cool, lots of blinky lights. Uh, it can even react. If you pet its head, it'll react to that. It plays sound and music. Uh, really neat project. two at Maker Fair. It was a great day, lots of things going on. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for coverage of day three, the last day 
of Bay Area Maker Faire 2016.